Hey there, stampers. Welcome back. This is part five of the Snow Days Scrapbooking Workshop Kit series that I've been working on. So the first thing I'm going to do is share the contents of the kit. So I've got some scraps of cardstock there and lots of scraps of patterned paper, some just little pieces and then some larger pieces. I do have one full sheet of this diagonal striped pattern paper and one full sheet of white left. Um, so what I'm going to do is I love diagonal striped patterned paper as kind of a background, like a little bit of a border. So I'm going to gut this because I don't want to waste the inside of this pattern paper. So I'm cutting a one inch border all the way around the edges. So I've lined it up with the one inch mark on the right hand side of my paper trimmer and I'm cutting from one inch to 11 inches on each side. So then I have that whole center piece to use and I've got that framed piece to use. Now I'm trimming about three eighths of an inch off of two sides of my 12 by 12 white. And you'll see that when I put my white on top of the diagonal stripe, I've got this great diagonal border around the edges. So fun. And I have all this 10 by 10 inch piece to work with. So we're gonna cut some strips of this pattern paper. We're gonna cut two inch strips. So these are two by 10. Um, and then we're gonna cut a couple from this pattern paper as well. And I'm gonna use both sides of this. So I got three pieces out of that and I believe I use, I end up using all three of those and I'm gonna cut one more of those. And then I'm gonna tear the edges or to tear one long edge from each one of these strips. So I'm just going and tearing it just to roughen up the edges. And then I'm taking my finger to each piece and just kind of curling it up to give it even more dimension. And it's gonna create kind of like a fun little placeholder where my photos are gonna sit over top. I thought I could put like a little strip of one of the pattern papers across the top, but I didn't like it, so I put those back. Okay, so I cut my mat. Initially, I was gonna do this layout for two four by four photos. So these mats are cut from early espresso and they start as four by four. I do end up changing one of them. I reduced the size on one of them because it just felt a little heavy. Part of it has to do with just the cardstock being so dark and it's not going to be like that once I get my photos on it. So it would feel better once my photos are on there. Um, and now I apologize. This is out of um, camera for a bit here, but I cut some strips to put across the top, just in that upper left corner. You will be able to see it a bit, a bit better down the road. So initially I had three different strips, one strip of Poppy Parade cardstock and then a couple strips of pattern paper, but I do end up changing that a little bit. Okay, uh, what do I do next? All right, so now I grab some white because I'm gonna stamp my title and I decided to pull out the stamp set, it's actually the Halloween greeting set. It's called Halloween Memories. And it says Wickedly Good, Wicked Good Times, I think it says. But I'm just gonna use the words Good Times. I do end up inking the whole thing just because it's easier. So, and I'm using Early Espresso to tie in that Early Espresso color for my photo mats. And then I'm gonna fussy cut the words good and times. Now I've pulled in my favorite die set, which is called the greetings of the season dies. And I'm just kind of auditioning different label shapes here. This one felt a little bit big, so I don't end up going with this one. I try this one and the words good times don't really fit on there. So then I try it without um, and then I decide, oh, you know what I could do? I could do a couple different patterns up at the top and have those dangling down. And then I try this one. And this one's going to fit quite nicely. So I choose this one that I'm going to cut from white cardstock. I end up changing that down the road. Uh, and then this narrow oval shape, I'm going to cut from some Poppy Parade. And this arrow type one is going to be cut from one of the exclusive papers from this collection. So now all my pieces are cut. Um, so I do end up taking out one of those pattern papers from the top. And here, these are all label shapes that I cut. So they've got holes in the top. So I'm gonna use some of my sweet sorbet and white baker's twine that I pulled out when I started working with this collection. One of the great things about 
working with a collection and if it doesn't have any embellishments is pull, go through your stash and pull out stuff that will work with it. Um, if you missed the previous videos, I will link them the, in the description of this video so that you can go back and watch the rest. Um, so this will be the, the final video in this series, but I will have some additional projects to share because I plan on creating a few cards with the leftover pieces. I probably have enough to create another layout and maybe I'll do a six by six, six by eight layout. I'm not sure, um, but I still have a few things left that I want to create. I just can't believe how much stuff I've made with this, this one kit. So fabulous. All right. So now I'm going to stick all these strips down. I'm going to pull in my T-square to help me make sure that I've got it straight. And we're going to start with the bottom strip and just add a little bit of adhesive and, our work, and work our way up. Okay, there we go. Our strips are down here. I forgot to mention, here's where I trimmed down my photo mat. So I cut it down to three by three. And here I'm going to take some white uh, frayed ribbon, I think it's called. Feed it through. I end up changing this completely up. I feed through some baker's twine and I tie another bow. Um, I end up taking this apart and changing it out completely. because it felt like it was just too much white. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that. I will have all of the supplies for this project linked below. So, I, and if you have any questions, of course, you can post a comment, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so I've pulled this down a little bit more so you can see it just barely. So I've got that script strip of Poppy Parade. I do wanna point out that the Poppy Parade cardstock that I'm using, that was not included in this kit. I introduced it, I think, in the second video. And so I just kept the strips or the scraps in the package to continue using as I worked through this kit. So now I'm pulling in the, the Halloween memories, the snow day stamp sets, just to see if there's anything else that I could add on there. I was gonna, I was looking for something to stamp down the red piece, the Poppy Parade piece, but I decided not to go with anything. I thought that that could be a good place to add the when and the where, when I decide what photos to put on here, because I have no idea what photos are gonna go on here. All right, so here I'm pulling in the good times and this is just not working for me. I, I don't love it. And you know what, what I end up going with, I don't love either, but sometimes you just have to go with it. Um, I kind of wish maybe in hindsight, I put my title in a different place, but it is what it is. Okay, so I recut that label shape from some Poppy Parade cardstock. I just felt like the title was kind of getting lost there. I am gonna feed that white ribbon through and the baker's twine, because I, I do really love that. Do you find that you ever just settle? You just you had enough fussing? Because I tried, I tried embossing with a snowflake embossing folder, that white piece. I tried adding some ink blending with some pool party. I cut all that out because I wasted so much time trying and I don't didn't end up liking it, so. But do you find that you um, ever do that where you just, you know what, it is what it is. Done is better than perfect. So sometimes I just, I just settle. And it's okay to not love every aspect about every layout that you create or every project that you create. Okay, so that first, that larger photo mat I did put flat and this smaller one I popped up on dimensionals. I'm just going to use some multi-purpose glue to adhere the times and that's going to go on straight and then the good I'm going to put kind of at an angle because it doesn't quite fit and you can see that my photo mats I did not put them straight I like to do that every once in a while especially on something on a page that might be a little bit more whimsical but I don't ever put them too much at an angle I don't want people to feel like they have to turn their head to see the photo so it's just a very slight angle here I'm just popping up that um, tag 
And what is, oh, here I put, I've pulled out some of those loose sequ, uh, snowflakes. I'm going to add a few of those to this tag and then a couple more to the upper left where I have my little cluster at the top. And then I still feel like there's something else that's needed. And I happened to look over at my scraps and I still had a scrap of that pattern paper with all the little snow globes on it. So I do end up fussy cutting out some of those snow globes and adding those on. I add three of them on there. So I'm just adding my snowflakes here. Okay, and it's coming along. So I'm just having a look again at the stamp sets just to see if there's anything else. Oh, and I saw some more scraps. I love to do this with scraps, just creating little tuck-ins. So I cut a scrap of Poppy Parade, not even straight. It doesn't even have to be straight because you're only going to see a little tiny bit of it. And initially I had this house pattern paper, but it felt like it was too busy. So I pulled in another scrap of that same pattern paper that I did that flagged piece with. It's predominantly pool party. So I'm going to cut a small piece of this. It's a little bit wider than the Poppy Parade. I'm going to stick this on here and then adhere that kind of tucked in behind that one photo. And it just pulls in a little bit of color in behind. It's a perfect little addition. All right. Now here is where I'm going to fussy cut some of these little snow globes. And... You can see one of those is a flat edge. So it was cut down straight, but I'm just gonna line it up with that white cardstock. There's no reason you can't use the, around the edges of these types of pattern papers. They're also great for insides, the insides of your cards. All right. There we go. So we're gonna pop two, one, pop that one up and the other one's flat. And then I'm gonna add one more. So I'm gonna fussy cut another skinnier snow globe and I can contemplate putting it up there you'll see me audition it again once I have it fussy cut I thought that might look cute up there but it does kind of look like it's floating so I decide not to go with that I put it somewhere else all right if you guys have been enjoying this series make sure that you check out my kill a kit club that is starting in October where we will take each month we will take one of these kits and I plan on working through it using as much as I can and sharing all the inspiration with club members. All right, so here's a little bit of a closer look. I will link to where you can find more information on that club in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.